so I got an order for one of my broadhead plaques here and uh, this is basically for a European style or uh, Texas mount and I'm going to show you how to make one of these today but before I get into that the order itself came from Alaska it came from Travis Cook um, and I wanted to give him a little bit of a shout out and kind of tell his story a little bit because it's pretty amazing basically he's been hunting archery for about three years now and he he got a doll sheep tag with a partner and uh, his partner couldn't go so he went on this hunt solo so a doll sheep hunt is like a dream bucket list hunt for a lot of hunters it's extremely difficult and uh, he ended up harvesting his first ever animal with a bow and arrow and it turned out to be a doll sheep um, and then he had to pack it out by himself he ended up falling down a cliff and uh, just an amazing story I'm just really excited to be a part of that and uh, help him you know display this mount in his house so that when anybody comes over they're gonna gravitate towards that ask questions and he'll be able to share that experience with other people as well as relive it so um, pretty amazing and uh, I'm, I'm glad that he shared that story with me anyway let's get to making this plaque for Travis Okay, first things first, um, the wood, it's made out of three quarter inch thick uh, oak. The reason I'm using oak is because the grains stand out really well and uh, it's made out of six different pieces of oak and the grains are actually oriented so that they are in the same direction as the blade on the broadhead. That gives it a really clean, uh, crisp and it makes it look actually sharp. So that's why I do it that way and uh, it actually makes it a little bit easier to make in the long run. The first thing we gotta do is cut these pieces here. They're, they're all right about the same width, one and a half inches, and about 15 inches here, 15 inches here, and about 12 inches here. So first thing we're gonna do is rip this down to one and a half inches, and then we'll cut them to length. Can you see it yet? There it is. Starting to get together already. So the next thing we got to do here is we are going to cut these angles on the, the front. This is a really tricky and important part here. Um, I'm going to cut these angles at 22 and a half degrees, but that's not really the important thing. The important thing is that each one of the cuts has to be at the same exact angle. You can be off by a little bit on your angle. You cannot be off between angles on these pieces of wood or you will have gaps and it will not look right. Basically, um, for a 22 and a half degree cut, if I took this, put it up against the fence on my miter saw and I try to turn my blade, I can't get to 22 and a half degrees. Most miter saws don't. They, uh, they go to a little bit over 45 either way. So what I'm gonna do is take this piece of plywood, and plywood is good, you know, finished plywood like this is good to use as like a tool. I'm gonna take it and use this end up against the fence. I'm gonna take this and put it up against there. It gives me something to hold on to. I will probably even clamp this together, and uh, then I will be able to put my saw at 22 and a half degrees this way and cut that off. So that's the plan, and uh, I'll show you how it goes. No more chewing on wood, huh? You're a good boy, but you're making a bunch of noise in the video. All right, so before I go on to the next one, uh, I'm not gonna show it on video, but what I do wanna show is I know which side I want the grain because there's a lot of nice uniform grains on this side. Um, so what I need to do is take this and flip it and make the same cut on that side and then when I flip it back it'll mate up. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Okay so the second one is done and uh, I'll show you a close up of how those made up. And they made up just about perfectly all right so the next thing is going to be cut this one and you need a perfectly uh, marked center line for this so that you can end that cut 
uh, in the right location on the miter saw. Before you get over here and uh, get excited and start cutting, uh, most people are going to put that center line up and for your first cut you actually want it down and I'll explain why in a sec. Alright, so I made my first cut and now I flipped it over and I'm ready to make my second cut. So basically now the center line is my guide. I'm going to make multiple cuts until I reach that center point. Okay, so I kept creeping up until I met that line and uh, now these are exactly the same. Uh, angles and they're the same size. Another good way that you can tell is you can take a right angle like this, uh, lay it along this side, and if these two points intersect, you know, the right angle, these are exactly the same length and everything. I need to glue this up so that it is, it will not move and it's going to be set. Uh, once it's set, then I can continue to cut these down to the point where they slip in and that's where I'll know that they're the right size to be glued in. Now that I have this glued together, I'm going to start working on these back pieces here. Um, and the way I did this the first time was basically I made a paper template so that I knew how all the, the shapes and uh, sizes went together. And then I just transferred that paper template to the wood. And that's what you'll have to do. Um, but I'm going to do the same thing basically with a, a wooden template now. Um, I'm going to lay out the design here and then uh, I'll cut that. I have to cut that before I glue this in because if I glued that, I can't get my bandsaw into this cavity in order to cut it. Alright, so you watched me make multiple cuts on this piece, and in between each one of those cuts, I was bringing it over here and checking how it fit. One of the major points is right here that I was concerned with. This is basically on the uh, template plaque. It's where we need a, a complete flat cut right here to add this piece and glue that piece on, which is acting as the arrow shaft that the broadhead is, is screwing into. So this point right here has to line up with the back of this uh, shank for the, the broad head. So I kept cutting away until this got deep enough that it was almost lined up with that. So the other thing that I was concerned with was this point here. I want that point to be sharp and almost tangent to this uh, shank here so that it kind of disappears into the shank. Um, so basically you saw that I flipped this over and cut on this face and that doesn't matter at all because this is a, a 22 and a half degree angle no matter how you hold it so it doesn't matter how which side you cut off of so I did that twice and uh, now these are pretty much ready to be glued in so that's what I'm going to do next All right, so I have these glued on now, and I just want to finish off this back cut here so that I can glue on the back piece. So next is just attaching this back piece that uh, represents the arrow shaft. All right, so we got this glued on, and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is lay this on here, sketch out where these lines go. Cut those on the bandsaw. Alright, so next, um, you could do this by hand, but I'm going to use a spindle sander, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, I'm just going to sand down these curves right down to the line on the inside and on the outside.
All right, so next I'm gonna work on the, uh, the blade profile on this surface and this surface. And I have the router table out with a 45 degree chamfer bit on there. And I'm gonna cut both, both sides with that. So, so one on the top and one on the bottom. And when you do that, um, it gives it a good look. It makes it look more realistic, like it's actually a sharpened blade when it's hanging on the wall. All right, so this is what it looks like afterwards. Uh, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, first, you can see the, there's this shelf here and this shelf here. Uh, those are there because my router bit's a little bit small for this three quarter inch board. Um, and I did this on a scrap piece before to test it and I was able to actually sand those shelves out. So um, you won't even notice after I sand it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I did this in one pass without raising that um, router bit. The reason I did that is I, I tested that out on the, uh, the scrap piece. It worked out fine. The router had enough power to cut through all that material in one pass, so uh, it made it easier for me to just set the depth, cut it, and, and not worry about raising that and screwing anything up. All right, so I switched over to a half inch cove bit and uh, I actually have already got the depth set. Uh, I tested it to make sure it looked uh, just about close to what this is. And that cove bit will be done on the inside here and then uh, just around the back here on both sides. And that will finish up pretty much all the detail on the plaque. All right, so we are getting pretty close now. Um, the next thing is, uh, you can see right here, the, the cove bit can't make it to the corner there. So we gotta do that by hand. Um, you can see what it looks like on the, the template one when I finished it. So I got the cove bit issue fixed, and uh, basically just by hand, I took the Dremel and carved down into here, kind of tapered that off to a point. Um, it looks kind of rough right now, but that'll get finished sanded right now. All right, so all the sanding's done, and I went all the way up to 220 on this and I think that's all it needs. Um, it's up on the wall, you're not gonna be touching it, you're not gonna be that close to it, um, and also it has a skull right in front of it, so I don't think it needs any more than that, and uh, now I'm getting ready to stain. And I like going with a dark stain, um, whether you got deer antlers or, or whatever, it uh, typically, the white bone contrasts the deer antlers, and then um, if you do this dark, it matches the deer antlers. So um, dark walnut looks really good, and, and that's what I use. All right, so now that it's stained, I'm gonna finish it with polyurethane. Um, and uh, this is fast drying so it's a little bit thinner and uh, it might take a couple coats um, and I might sand it with like 320 or 220 in between coats to knock down you know if dust gets on there so All right, so after all that work, the plaque is finally finished. So here's a close up of what it looks like. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think Travis is gonna love it. Um, once he gets this in the mail and mounted up on the wall, 
he's going to take some pictures of it and send them over to me. So if you're interested in seeing what this looks like with a uh, doll sheep skull hanging off the front of it, um, I'm going to post those to my website and leave a link in the description so you can go check those out. But if you're making one of these for, say, like a deer skull, I can give you an idea of what that looks like right here. Something like that. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to make something like this on your own. But, uh, you know, if you don't have the woodworking skills or the equipment to make one of these, you can always just purchase one on my website too. Um, or if you don't like this design and you have a favorite broadhead that you want me to make a plaque of, go over to my website and fill out the contact form and we'll see what I can do. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to support my channel, um, you can also purchase hats I have available or t-shirts. Uh, the other thing is, if you don't want to spend any money, you can always just subscribe to my channel. That definitely helps support it. As always, get out there and be one with the outdoors.